Hello and welcome to the Security Webinar. My name is Russell Rajakovsky and I am the Customer Success Manager here at Security. My background is mainly in networking and systems administration. While working for some local software companies and technology companies, I developed an increased interest in cybersecurity and how it affects companies, and that kind of led to my role here at Security. At Security, we get asked all the time, where do we begin implementing a cybersecurity program? And today we are going to be talking about just that. This webinar will be starting our security awareness training series and begins with today's topic of how and where to begin implementing your cybersecurity program. Following the webinar, we're going to have a short question and answer period um, on the topic of today's webinar. So if you do have any questions, you can chat them into the box. Okay, so let's get started here. So why is security important? Cyber attacks are increasingly frequent and highly visible. While the reasons for targeting you may be less obvious, the motivations are no less real, and almost everyone is under attack from sophisticated and not so sophisticated people. Security is something every business should be aware of and should develop a program of policies and procedures to cover. This is kind of your first line of defense. Unfortunately, for many small to medium-sized businesses, either due to a lack of understanding, time, or budget restraints, this isn't something they can focus on until they have a problem. Here at Security, we've developed a tool to help you cover the basics and track your progress. Whether you develop your own software or simply use the internet for email and day-to-day -day business, you should have a cybersecurity program. It is easy to believe that as a small or medium-sized company, you're too small to warrant the attention of cyber criminals. However, these criminals are now actively targeting this market as they believe these businesses are easier targets due to their lack of security. This webinar today will cover the basics of what you should be aware of and what you can easily do to start a basic cybersecurity program. We'll be covering many of these topics a little more in depth in our subsequent webinar series. Your security program is something that should be a joint responsibility within your company or organization, as it's most effective when everybody from the board members to the owners, managers, and employees are working together to improve their security. So where to start? If I asked you, what is every asset that your company has and that could be impacted by a possible risk, could you outline them all? If I asked you to outline every possible risk, could you? Does your company have any measures to mitigate or reduce these risks? While you may be able to answer some of these questions or partially answer them, having a complete picture of your company's assets and the risks that would affect them is step one in your program, conducting a risk assessment. You know, the first question you may ask is, well, what are my assets? Well, your assets are anything that of value that is owned by your organization. It could be a laptop, it could be the network that transmits data in your office. It could be your head developer who holds the keys to your AWS instances. The next question you might have is, well, how do I evaluate my, uh, my assets? For this, there are many ways that you can kind of measure um, your assets. We recommend using cost. How much is the asset worth? And is there a financial impact um, that the loss of this asset would have on my company? If you have never conducted a risk assessment, you need to. It will allow you to see where you're covered and where you aren't. We will cover how to do a risk assessment in our next webinar, but for today, let's cover some quick tips on what you should be aware of when it comes to a risk assessment. Security is based on three fundamental goals. This is commonly referred to as the CIA triad. So it's confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And this applies to each one of your assets. Confidentiality is any important information you have, such as employee, client or financial records should be kept confidential. This information should only be accessed by people or by systems that you have given expressed permission to do so. Integrity. You need to maintain your information and your other assets in order to make sure that everything is complete, intact, and uncorrupted. Finally, availability. You should maintain the availability of systems such as networks, your services, and information when required by your business or its clients. Achieving and maintaining these goals is an ongoing process. Some best practices involve the following. Determine what assets you need to secure. This is usually anything of value uh, managed or owned by your organization. Identify the threats and risks that would affect each of these assets 
or your business overall. Identifying what mitigation you should or already have in place to deal with these threats and secure your assets. Monitoring each asset to prevent or to manage security breaches. Finally, updating and adjusting to safeguards in response to changes in assets, threats, and risks. Once you've conducted a risk assessment, you'll have a better understanding of not only your potential gaps in security, but you'll also learn more about your company as a whole. The next step is who is the leader of your security team? At least one person or a team of people within your organization should be in charge of your security program. This person or team would be responsible for the following. Learning about threats, trends, and security options planning or acquiring and implementing security safeguards, helping other personnel understand best practices and policies, enforcing these best practices and policies with the support of management, and finally, maintaining and updating the security safeguards used by your business. Even with a specific person in charge of your security, the success of your security program within a business must have the support of management. The support you provide will depend on the size of your organization, but all managers are responsible for the following. Providing guidance to all employees on the importance of security as part of the day-to-day -day operations, including policies to outline accountability. Supporting and monitoring security projects. Consulting with experts, such as legal counsel for any external obligations, such as provincial, state, or federal law. The next step is security awareness. Keeping up with the latest security and technological developments can seem like a daunting task. A good first step is developing an internal awareness program with your company. An awareness program is a key way of keeping you and your employees informed on best practices when it comes to cybersecurity and does not have to be overly complicated. It can start with something very simple such as um, that can be developed by yourself or another employee that has an understanding of both business and technology. This is a very important element to have both an understanding of your day-to-day -day operations as well as the technology role with those operations. A simple training for staff members um, is an example of an awareness training. Over time, this can be built upon, updated to include new changes or updates, reminders on policies, standards, and best practices. Choosing simple topics that can be covered in a concise way will keep your team focused, not waste anybody's time. All right, the next step we have is write down and document it. The only way employees will know for sure how to conduct themselves and what they are responsible for is if you document it. This can be done through a set of policies and procedures. A security policy is a document that outlines exactly what employees can or cannot do with respect to technology. These policies can cover everything from internet use to social media, email, or acceptable use. These are all examples of security policies. An acceptable use policy might state something like you may not connect a personal computer to a business network or when accessing the business network from home, you must use a virtual private network. These policies do not have to be long or overly complicated. In fact, the longer or more complex the policy, the harder it will be to implement and the harder it will be to get your staff to read them and understand them. Essentially, these policies are a guide to help your employees understand their roles and responsibilities when it comes to technology and security. Begin with a relatively simple security policy to outline all key principles and rules for cybersecurity within your organization. Identify and adapt existing policies or procedures to deal with specific cybersecurity issues or technologies in your business. You can write your own or you can contact a third party to develop them for you. Explain policies and procedures to your staff. This will allow them to understand the rationale for rules, who they apply to, and any consequences for failing to follow the policy. After the initial policies have been developed, you can review them and add in any additional details or topics you might have missed. As well, it's imperative to review your policies at least once a year. That way they can be, always be up to date. Keep in mind that this process can take time, money, and resources to complete thoroughly. If you're already using Securacy, all the policies will be automatically generated for you. Along with the policies are a set of projects and tasks to help bring together your security program. As, uh, as well, built into the policies is a sign-off and compliance tracking to show you the progress you're making and as well to keep track of what staff members are reading and being compliant to your policies. The 
last step we're going to talk about is budget. Having an effective security plan costs money and must be taken into account when drawing up your annual business plans and budgets. Um, fortunately, there are some free services and tools and advice available. Additionally, policies or some internal documents can be developed in-house, sometimes at a minimal cost. But some key things like security safeguards will have to be purchased and they might also involve annual subscriptions. Malware for or anti-malware software, for example, might have to be renewed each year for a fee on each device you install it on. To avoid some surprise expenses, it's best to always accommodate for the following. The first time cost of any security tools, as well as upgrade or update fees, any support, consulting or training costs, and any contingencies. A contingency fund is very important for dealing with unforeseen emergencies. If all your laptops were to be hit by malware or ransomware, you may have to purchase all new devices or all new hard drives. In some cases, your insurance may cover losses due to cybersecurity incidents, but it's important to discuss this with your insur insurance provider in advance. So let's start. Let's review each step we talked about today and bullet point some of the most important information. With a risk assessment, you create a baseline. What, is, what are all the technology and assets that your company has? List each one and the value to your organization. What is the confidentiality, availability, and integrity of each asset? What are all the risks that could affect each asset? List all the risks and how they will impact your assets. Finally, document your findings in a spreadsheet or document and share it with the key decision makers in your team. Create a team or employee to champion your security program. Will it be one person or will it be a team? Are they covering all aspects of both business and technology and how the two relate to each other? What will they do? What are their roles and responsibilities? Will they look into implementing your security awareness training? Will they monitor uh, your employees and how they are being compliant with your policies? Security awareness. Your security team should develop a program of awareness. The program should be used to educate your team on best practices and what they should and should not do when it comes to technology. The training should be short, concise, and always on the most relevant topics. Finally, policies and documentation. Do you have any policies and procedures that handle your security? Are they up to date? Do you need to write new policies or expand upon old ones? Have you developed a system of procedures to handle the implementation of these policies? Using Securacy removes the step of creating your own policies and projects, allowing you to start implementing your security program right away. I wanted to thank everybody for joining us today for our first webinar in our security awareness training series. Uh, be sure to check out our blog and website if you would like to learn a little bit more about Securacy. We can be found at Securacy.com. Next week, we'll be learning about how to start a basic risk assessment. And now we can review any questions anybody might have. Hey, Ashley, that's a great question. It is pretty broad in terms of um, an example. I'm just going to read the question out so everybody can hear it. What is the option we have for a person to be in charge of, to be in charge of this needs training? Um, what kind of training should we give them? Um, what certifications are needed. Uh, there are a number of certifications you can get. Um, it, it's best to kind of have someone who already has a background in technology. Um, it kind of removes that need to get somebody trained. There are a few programs out there um, on the different training that is available. Some things like a basic security plus training um, is a great one. It's kind of a fund fundamental certification. It's pretty much your base level. There are a few more, but they kind of are a little above and beyond the kind of uh, a regular person's understanding of technology. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Doesn't look like we have any more questions. Oh, we have a few more there. Let me scroll down a little more. I didn't see them. Uh, where would the training be located? There are lots of um, training centers. The best for security awareness is usually to host it kind of inside your office if you have someone who can do that training. Um, there are training centers available, I do know, in Halifax um, if you're local. The other option would be to kind of search your local area and see um, you know, where there would be training available. Uh, we have another question here. Can you review the responsibilities again, please? 
Um, Colin, what were those responsibilities? Any, and then we have one here, um, any suggestions or recommendations on creating awareness training programs for employees? Um, really the best thing I would have would be to kind of start with your basics, depending on your organization, um, such things as email security. Can you train your employees on how to identify you know, malicious links? Always ensure that they're reading who the email is coming from, checking that it is an actual the email address that they can trust, um, having uh, and, or a malware training or antivirus training, something very basic to start off with, and then you can kind of build upon and expand it from there. Um, with Securacy, we are doing our own training. Um, so this will be a weekly webinar series where we will be covering kind of the basics on everything from email security um, up to kind of some broader topics such as like GDPR or PCI compliance. Any more questions? Responsibilities for the security leader. Uh, the responsibilities for them would be really to kind of be in charge of implementing um, the security program. They would be the ones to kind of champion create the creation of these policies and procedures. They would review your business and the technology that you use. They would create an awareness training program for your employees to help educate them. Um, and they would also be kind of making sure that the employees are following through with your policies. If your policies include things like hardening your laptop or making sure you're using a virtual private network, your security team leader would be actively going in maybe once a year or on a quarterly basis and reviewing your employees' laptops. Are they using a secure password? Do they have a VPN installed? Such things like that. And we are keeping a copy of the questions there, Jay. Thank you very much. If anybody has any other questions, feel free to type them in. Uh, we'll stay on the line for a little bit longer. The, will the webinars be available for download? They will. Um, we will have them hosted on our website, and I believe they will actually be sent to you um, in a follow-up email, um, so you'll get your own copy of the webinar to have at your convenience. All right, thank you everybody today uh, for participating in the webinar. We will have one next week again on starting a basic risk assessment. Thank you very much and have a great day.